Hey folks, well, Plymouth Power to you. But that's not the subject of today's video on this nice warm afternoon. I think the temperature today on the 22nd of September was 96 degrees here in Alabama. Can you believe it? Hot, hot, hot. There's my wonderful uh, weed pile that I've got to burn since we get a little bit of cold weather. Wet weather maybe. But that's not the subject of today's video. Uh, I've done a little horse trading again. And I got this. This is a 1994 Chevrolet Caprice LS. Just give you a little quick walk around of it. Overall, this car is not in bad shape. That's pretty solid. It's got some dents here and there. As you can see, there's one. One there on the door. And there, the fender is pretty bad. Dent there. Dent there. <laughs> True to form. I'm out here making a video, and guess what's going on over there? These people are addicted to yard car, lawn care. They have to be. This person over here never does it. He does it uh, once or twice a week, and he's done. This person over here, it's endless. But anyway, back to this. Uh, I can continue around here and just show the overall view of this car. Uh, traded the 66 Catalina for this car to a buddy of mine and uh, before you boo and hiss me the Catalina is going to a good home uh, he has time to work on it and motivation and fix it up so that'll be good now down here we don't have rust problems of course so this car frame and body and everything is clean but down here we suffer from dirt. People that have cars down in this part of the country are some of the nastiest pigs you'll ever see anywhere. Maybe, maybe it's the same other places in the, in the country, but I've down here for sure. So uh, anyway, looking around here, the dash is not too bad. It's got the radio missing. Somebody's had another radio in it. Steering wheel's kind of yucky. I don't have the battery hooked up, but it's got 259,000 miles on it. it. Does run good. No exhaust on it past the catalytic converters. My friend um, used the mufflers off of it. I have the mirror, it's in the trunk. It's got a crack in the windshield. So it's definitely gonna need some TLC in here. These door panels are in pretty bad shape. And not easy finding all this trim that goes on these door panels. I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I've, when he had it, I was looking in the junkyards for parts for it, and I ran this car through the the VIN number off this Comp Nine website that gives you, you just put in the VIN of the car, a GM car, and it gives you a breakdown of all the options. But the neat thing about it was it tells you how many total cars were produced of that model that year, and it also tells you. Um, like for a particular option that the car has, how many had that same option? And I think this year there were tw out of 97,000 Caprices made, only 2,600 had this trim color in here. So that could explain part of the reason it not being easy to find this junk. So, yeah. look at that. 
it's nasty, nasty, nasty. Everything in there is nasty. Look at this seat. <laughs> oh man. Jeez. <laughs> oh good. Roadside assistance. That's good. We might need that. Alright. Now look at this. Look at that seat. Boing. It's actually bent that way. It's not actually moving that much. It's just torqued. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well. All right, so anyway, there it is. So y'all may be wondering, say, well, who said Tyler, you know, you, you pick up a lot of interesting things and apparently and this, that, and the other, but why in the world would you want just a good old plain giant Caprice like this? You know, that's a grandma car. Well, it could be a grandma car. But let's check out these option codes a little bit on this little lid in here. Uh, just a continuation of the nastiness. At least I didn't have to come in through the seat on this one. <laughs> All right, this is your spid label here. What the known is, let's hope I can focus on this. It's kind of okay. It's got a all your option, major option codes on here. So let's just take a look and if my camera will focus. And you guys that have these cars, you're already probably going to know what you're going to see. But I'm going to just kind of go through here. Look at these. Kind of name off some of the uh, different ones. That AU, the AUO, that's keyless entry. Take a look at that one. Oops. oops, oops, oops. See that second one down before you? That sports suspension package. B92, C60 is air conditioning. FE3, that's handle performance suspension, performance handling. Most of these cars had FE1. GW9, that's 293 gear ratio. G80, that's limited slip rear end. JA2, J, JA2, I believe, is uh, the J codes or the brakes. And there's also a code in there for a oil cooler, transmission cooler. Ah, what's this? I see a LT1 there. That's your engine code. Five. Seven. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to try to decipher all of these. VO8, that's heavy duty cooling. Uh, V73, I think that's, uh, no, I'm sorry, V92, that is the trailer option package, I think. It's one of those two. It's one of those V packages. And, let's be, da, 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 da. NBA, paint code 97.95. Now, 774A, so, you haven't figured it out yet, what are we looking at here? This is a 94 Caprice, what, excuse me, what is known as a B4U option car, which means it is, has the LT1 engine in it, 350, has a uh, 293 rear gear ratio, limited slit rear end, heavy duty brakes, oil cooler, transmission cooler, heavy duty cooling with mechanical fan, dual exhaust, factory, all that's from the factory. And what's somewhat significant about this, it doesn't really make this car, you know, worth a lot of money or anything, but this car has most of what comes on a Impala Super Sport, like for a 94 or 90, through 96 Impala Super Sport, has most of that except the console 
and the rear disc brakes and I think the gear ratio was slightly different than they had a 308 rear gear ratio but it does have most of that and that B4U package there um, with all that equipment I just named off that was the only way on one of these you can get an LT1 350 engine in it I mean, there's just no other way because that's they wouldn't most of the other ones you can see 1G1 BN 52P that's your eighth digit is your engine denominator and P is the LT1 and W is the 4.3 liter and they look almost exactly the same there's really no way to tell the difference on one of these so there's been a lot of these cars with 4.3 liter engines that have been passed off as LT1s and nobody's been the wiser but this was absolutely not one of those this is a factory LT1 so I'm glad of that but uh, it does have some issues. It's going to have to have some transmission work on it. Transmission uh, is just barely working in it. Uh, it idles a little high. Have to have that resolved. You know, that's the mechanical, mainly the mechanical things that need fixing on it. And I don't know how soon I'll get around to this because I want to get some more done on my couple Mopar that I have going right now. So. And one last thing on this, I'm kind of tooting my own horn a little, but uh, if you notice this color on this car, this is a 94, but this color is dark gray green metallic, which is an, also an Impala Super Sport color, but only in 95 and 96. So, yeah. Be a neat car to tinker around with. I wanted an LT1 wagon, but prices on what B-body wagons are going up again. So this became available, and my buddy's happy now, and I'm happy. So hopefully, I'll make some more videos along the way with this thing. See what I get into with it. Oh, and uh, if you're wondering about the Buick Century I bought, I posted a video up. I actually, I cleaned that car up and, and drove it around for a week just to check it out. And I ended up, uh, I sold it, I resold it. That was kind of my intention to begin with because <laughs> it was my intention with that car to begin with because I, I just, I buy cars like that every once in a while to just fix up and make a few hundred dollars on. So, uh, but this is not one of them. I want to hang on to this for a while because... I've liked this car ever since he bought it. So, uh, anyway, if anybody can give me some pointers or leads on a parts car or something to get these and to do something about this interior, about these door panels and everything, these are this trim is different between a, just a plain Caprice and the LS. The LS has got all this wood stuff on it. And this car's got, you know, it's got the power seats, power windows, power mirrors, all that stuff. So I'm going to be definitely in need of a door panel stuff and uh, probably for sure a seat. So it doesn't necessarily have to come out of another Caprice sedan. I mean, if, it, if you guys can have, have these cars and the wagons and all that can kind of give me a pointer on what to look, what kind of cars that will interchange into this, uh, I sure be glad to hear it. Gonna need some work. All right. Well, uh, maybe the next few days it cools down a little bit. I'll do a starting video of this thing. You can hear it sit here and roar. Until then, me and the lawn care person over here bid you a fond farewell. Goodbye.